Hi, I'm Dr. Jacob Lauritsen, and this is Read, Write, and Cite, the show where I teach you how to read, write, and cite for your college English classes. In this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between MLA citation style and APA citation style. So let's get started. First off the bat, we need to describe what each of these styles is and what their purposes are, and that's going to explain why they're different. Okay. A citation style in general is it's a set of rules and guidelines for how a college paper should look and how you're going to give credit to your sources, both in the text and at the end. There's a lot of different kinds of citation styles uh, because there's different purposes for research. And that's going to explain our difference between MLA and APA. So MLA stands for Modern Language Association. Modern Language Association has designed a citation style that is predominantly used for the humanities. So your English classes, your literature classes, maybe some foreign language classes, research and papers for those subjects, MLA is probably your best style. APA stands for American Psychological Association and their style um, is going to focus more on the sciences. If you're conducting original research, uh, you're reviewing original research, um, or even if you're in, say, nursing or some related field like that, something that's going to be uh, a little more scientific, that's when you're, you're probably going to be using APA instead of MLA. So let me explain. Because of those differences, your styles are going to be wildly different, okay? Because English classes are going to focus so much more on the words that an author has said, the style is going to reflect that. And it's going to lean heavier towards um, citing in text, citing l quotes and longer uh, sections of a paper. APA, they're not really going to focus on that. They're going to focus on how recent the research is, who said it, and what the content of the research is, the actual wording of the research is less important. And that's going to show up in just a bit. Okay, any citation style is basically going to have three parts. First, it's going to focus on what the paper looks like. What this does for the reader is they know where to find information inside the document. So maybe there's a title page, maybe there's not. Uh, you know, where do we look within a paragraph to find information? Where do they look at the end of the document to find information? All that's important and it helps readers to find what they need. Because unlike fiction writing where you might save the best part for the end, in research we don't do that. In research we want to say exactly what our point is right up front. Oftentimes we do that with uh, kind of a summary that we call an abstract. And that abstract is going to say, basically everything except for the entire document. It's, it's going to say the content of what that research is so someone knows whether it's going to be worth their time to read or not. There's no tricks about it. You say exactly what the research is and then you simply explain it. Let's talk about some of the differences between APA and MLA. In MLA, there's, there's the pure versions of the style that you're going to find in their publication manuals. So this is a the seventh, I think they're on to the eighth edition for MLA, and this is the fifth, they're on the sixth edition for APA. These big fat books um, explain all the rules, all the content, all the important stuff that you need uh, to follow to follow their style. Now in reality, unless you are a professional academic, you are the professor, your teacher may have his or her own set of rules and you need to follow those rules. So first thing first, regardless of what I say, if your teacher says to do something different, don't fight with your teacher. Do what your teacher says. They're gonna have a reason. Maybe they'll explain it, maybe they won't. What I'm talking about here are the pure versions of APA and MLA, all right? Okay, so first, formatting. You, you can tell almost immediately looking at the page whether you're looking at MLA or APA in large part because APA usually is going to require a cover page and MLA in its purest form does not. Now your teacher may ask for it, but, but MLA doesn't. MLA just asks for a little bit of information in your upper left hand corner, stuff like your name, your teacher's name, the name of the class, the date, 
and dates are backwards. It's kind of goofy, but it doesn't require a whole page for it. APA does. But again, do what your teacher asks for. If the teacher's like, eh, don't give me a cover page, just get straight into it, then you do what they say. Once you actually have the document started, you're gonna have the author's name and page number on every page. You're, you're gonna find that they're both double-spaced and they both, you know, are gonna follow standard English, right? But some of the wording itself is gonna be different. MLA, everything is written in the present tense right? You talk as if the author is, is alive and talking, right? So I could be talking about Shakespeare and I'm going to say Shakespeare writes, which is present tense. You don't do that. It was a really big change for me switching from working on a master's in English where I used MLA to a doctorate in education where I used APA because I had to stop writing in the present tense and start writing in the past tense. And there's certain rules about it and it's something that my teachers kept calling me out on. So that's one of the differences in how the wording is, is written. Um, also, in MLA for your in-text citations, you're gonna see the complete in-text citation or parenthetical citation, the part that goes in the middle right at the end of the sentence where you use the information, that goes at the end of the sentence, right? All of it. And you use information like the author's name and the page number. That's it. And that makes sense because in MLA, you, you're using specific words, right? You're gonna use a quote or you're gonna summarize a, a section that's happening in the story. The exact words are really important in the kinds of text that you see for an MLA paper. APA, the actual wording, in APA, the actual wording that the researcher used is less important than the substance, than the content. And so your in-text citations for APA, it's gonna focus on the name, which is gender neutral. Um, it's first initial and then last name, right? You don't have to say the person's full name, like ever. Uh, MLA, you do. You focus on the author's name. But um, for APA, you're gonna put the year when you give attribution to the author. And then you don't really quote them. You just kind of summarize their research. You reference it. In fact, I had certain rules when I was working on my doctorate on how often I could actually use a direct quote. Direct quote is when you actually use their specific words. And a direct quote, I wasn't supposed to do it more than every 10 pages. And so with a rule like that, you basically just don't. You just don't use a direct quote. You summarize everything. MLA, you could never do that because the actual words mean so much. APA wants to know how recent the research is. And so that's why the year matters. And they want to know who said it so that they can give attribution. Then it's all about the ideas. And because you're putting the ideas into your own words, there's really no point in quoting, but you are citing because you're giving credit for their work. MLA, the, the author matters, the year doesn't because texts are so fluid in, in time that you only mention the year at the end of the document. You wanna know who said it and where in the document they said it so that someone can go find those words and they can look them up. They can look at the context before, during, and after. So that's what's most important is page numbers because you are looking for the specific part in the document. APA, page numbers, if you're summarizing an entire document, you just don't worry about it. You give credit at the end of the document, but you you're focused on the content. Who said it? What year was it? What'd they say? Make sense? Okay. So that takes us to the end of the document. They, they have different names for the end of the document where you give the complete citation. MLA, we call it works cited because you list the works cited in that document. Um, by extension, you can also have uh, works consulted or works referenced you know, for things you may have looked at, but maybe you didn't quote, just to kind of give credit. In MLA, um, in general, we call it references. Same idea, uh, same concept, there's just a different name, references. And then you, you include all the information, but the information you include is gonna focus on slightly different things. To know exactly what to look it up, you, you look in your specific guides and, and you do that. But in general, 
because each style is serving a different purpose that aligns with the text itself, that's why they're different. But this is what my personal feelings and experience have been. If you really understand one of these styles and you have to switch, it's not gonna be that hard. You just need to know how to swap it out to follow the other style because both have specific rules for formatting. Both have specific rules for how you give credit inside the text and both have specific rules for what you do at the end. They're both accomplishing the same kind of thing, but they just look different. And so if you have to do a paper, an MLA, and you're, you know, you're an education student or a nursing student, and this is just new to you, well, then learn what your English teacher needs and, and go ahead and do that. Be aware of the differences. Be aware that it's okay to actually use the words and uh, that the years, you're not gonna focus on that. But the opposite is also true. You know, if you're like me and you went from education, sorry, if you went from English and now you have to write about education, then, uh, you know, the specific wording is less important. The timeliness of the research is more important and you wanna give credit. You don't wanna talk in present tense, you choose uh, past tense and things like that. So though that's just a quick rundown on the difference between MLA and APA. I plan on doing more videos like this in the future. If you found this useful, please uh, let me know. I appreciate knowing, but share it with someone that you think uh, this video could help. That'd be a big help to me. And if you have questions, you can ask me in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, I'm Dr. Jacob Lauritsen and this has been Read, Write, Insight. Thanks for watching. Bye.